A zubogata! College dorms. This is where most parents imagine their kid to be at some point. College is a place that can lead them to a bright future, with many doors full of opportunity. But before getting here, what helps is a staff of educators who want the same for their students. And what's important is that we have created what you need by the end of sixth grade to be ready for college. Now, I'm not saying we're going to college next, but so when you, no door has been closed. No, it is wide open. And we want kids to know they believe it. And you know, what we do find is that some families say it more than others. And when and our school has, has high uh, rates of poverty, and it is one of those issues with generational poverty, is that when things are tough, people lose hope. And you know, hope, hopes, hope can be just the, just the way you think. And it's you keep that resiliency. We, we are, we'll put those images in there. Now I'll, I'll tell you, our school is no excuses, and we're and we talk about being college bound, and it's in every classroom, and it's everywhere on this campus. Well, there's you know there are three parts to our school. There's sort of a Think about like a Venn diagram with three circles, right? We have technology, we have school culture, and we have PBL, which is the instructional piece. The school culture piece is, is the belief that every kid has the right to go to college. Whether they choose to or not is up to them, right? So part of that piece is that they may never hear anywhere else other than from me or from Mr. Brangard or for any other person on our campus that college is an option and that's an expectation. The expectation is not that you go to college, it's that you be prepared to go to college if that's what you choose. A passionate staff of teachers and administrators need to be there to help young students realize the vast amounts of potential they have. Passion is key because this will show the students how happy they can be following passions of their own. My passion is for learning, teaching, creative, and giving as much as I can to community my passion is around social advocacy right it's it's by giving everyone an equal and fair chance it's about doing what's right in the world and righting wrongs and giving uh, this world a, a, a better look my passion is figuring out how to get my students to understand that they're in control of what they want their lives to be and figuring out a way to help them do that with the fact that they're nine years old because so many of them are in a situation right now where decisions they're making now really are going to impact the choices they have in junior high and high school. These passionate educators are part of the new development and teaching model. This is 21st Century Institute in Evergreen School District. So to get the school, there's there's a lot of key, key events. There, it started with uh, a little decision by Denise Williams. This is Denise Williams. She is a veteran educator and director of categorical programs who is a big supporter of 21st century learning in Evergreen School District. My passion is that I will continue to provide a structure for students in this district that is highly engaging, motivating, and is giving them opportunities to be involved in developing 21st century skills. Denise and other educators seek ways to create the best education for students in Evergreen School District. The district has begun implementing project-based learning in two of the district schools. Project-based learning is an instructional approach built upon authentic learning activities that enlarge the student's interest and motivation. It's kind of a little bit of being a vice principal, but also a lot of being an instructional leader. So all of the things we do here, I have to learn first through leadership, 
training at New Tech Network. And then I, in turn, um, help the teachers learn that. And then they, in turn, help the kids learn that. So it's a lot of different things. I'm in charge of the culture. I'm in charge of making sure the culture is right. I'm in charge of making sure they have everything they need as far as um, supplies and technology. I, mean, I, I, um, I tried to be an amazing teacher in every level that I was. And, you know, at the time I was in the classroom, the time that I would work uh, in pull-out programs, the time I was an assistant principal, even as a principal, I've always tried to make it as exciting as I possibly can. Now, as I look at this experience here at Catherine Smith, and, and you know, we're, we're about a little over halfway through our first year, the, the piece that, uh, that really, that I see is that our kids can retain what they've learned because they've had experiences around it. They can tell you what they learned. Um, we're doing we trace the Liberty Bell to make it on the soap. Wow. Is this your favorite project that you've done before? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing the Liberty Bell? Because it, it was an important part of, um, of America that they did. And they gave this the present to America. All right. Good job. Okay, what, one of the main parts of, of a, a project is the driving question. It's actually a single sentence that is the hardest part of project design because the project, it can't, you can't be able to, you shouldn't be able to Google the answer, right? You have to, it needs to be something that requires deep thought. And so if you, if the teachers have picked something that has that kind of rigor and has that kind of layer to it, it's, it automatically inspires. But there are other pieces to it also. It's, it, the teacher needs to move their role. They have to move their role to facilitator. It's a very uncomfortable place for, for many educators to put themselves. But they need to have, you know, it's, it's sometimes thought of as, as breadcrumbs. You know, okay, we're going this way. We're going this way. We're going this way. We're going this way. And you just keep motivating kids to kind of get that way. But they need to, it has self-discovery. It's got inquiry. So you have a deep question. You have to, how are you going to answer that, answer that question? Well, I, even thinking about that is deeper. It's not, there is no right and wrong answer when we're starting a project. A, a good, our, a classroom that where real PBL is going on is a loud classroom. So it's kids talking, it's kids, uh, you know, talking about their jobs, they're talking about what they're doing, sometimes talking about the wrong things, but, it's, but they're all talking all the time. Uh, a lot of communication, but it, it actually the, the, the students have to figure out how to get these things done and how to work with each other and how to figure out how to collaborate with some people that sometimes don't want to collaborate, some people that want to do, all, want to do everything all by themselves, other people who just, who just kind of see how far they can go with doing nothing. There's all kinds of dynamics going on. And the more and more we do it, the better and better they get at understanding that they have different roles and that those roles have to work together. The Institute was developed so that we could expand our knowledge base around project-based learning. Denise Williams created 21st Century Institute, a two-day event bringing East Coast educator and author Sam Seidel to visit the new developments in Evergreen School District, as well as talk about his work experience with alternative schools and the success of project-based learning. There's a lot of great people, almost everybody in the school, all the schools throughout our country do care about young people and want the best thing for young people. But I think a lot of times we get stuck in certain mindsets and we keep doing certain things, even if they aren't the most effective, just because that's the way we've always done them. And maybe we don't feel the courage to change them. Maybe we don't feel empowered to change them. Or maybe we don't have the right support structures around ourselves to really be empowered to change them. But for all of these reasons, we're not making the kind of changes that we need to make. And so my hope is to, through my writing, through going around and talking with folks, um, with big crowds, with school staffs, um, really just try to can encourage people and help remove some of those barriers so that people can start to really do things differently. And part of that is just by showing them some great examples like the High School for Recording Arts, um, where folks are really doing education in a different way and it's having a great result for students. And my belief is that if we show people enough good examples, um, we give them the inspiration, we provide some tools, and really just get the barriers out of the way for them to do what they already know is best, um, we're going to see some really fundamental shifts in how education is done in this country. 
Sam Seidel brought both the High School of the Recording Arts program director and founder to also talk about the success of their project-based school, which is an inspiration for him and many other educators. So project-based learning really um, allows young people to be who they are, to be authentically themselves, to come into school, school not as a statistic, not as a number, not as a deficit, but, but a human being that has worth, that already has something to give, and it's on us as a school to um, tap that and to nurture that. My passion is um, helping young people become successful in life and teaching them how to become lifelong learners and researchers and productive citizens. Sam, Tony, and TC all share similar goals and feel that project-based learning and 21st century skills are the way to achieve them. And people do well without college sometimes, but that's not the place for me to decide when, you're, when you leave as a sixth grader. You know, when you're leaving as a 12 or a 13 year old, your life is not decided. Every door needs to be open. And you know, for the kids that are like, I'm gonna be a soccer star, awesome. You know how you're gonna do that? We're gonna to go to college, you get on the team there. The college piece is really important. They have to see it every single day because they might not hear it anywhere else. And if they don't hear it anywhere else, then I'm ultimately responsible for that. In any room they go into. That's why there's the buffalo on the door. You know, it's, it's a reminder every day, even though we may not say, today you're going to college. You know, I might forget some days to say that, but they see the buffalo every day. They see me wear the CU shirt. They see shirts that say college bound on the back. Every day they walk across that line that says college bound this way with the arrows. And they might not notice it every day, but who else is going to tell them? You're college bound. We have to prepare you. This is what you need. You need to be able to do this to get over here. With new 21st century skills, each day these educators motivate their students to become more independent thinkers. But an innovative idea like project-based learning and a new way of teaching is not the only way to complete the task of inspiring and engaging students. Above all, what is most important is a passionate staff that believes in these ideas as well as their students. Every student has an educational journey that the parents and educators are also a part of. 21st century learning is the way to push the students and educators alike in reaching their goals, whether that be college or a large window of opportunity.